This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's uh, let's keep it moving here. This is going to be a fun discussion for the next match. It's two of the all-time greats, Seth Rollins and John Cena. It's WWE champion versus United States champion. Here's how we got here. On the July 20th Raw, John Cena would challenge Seth Rollins for a title match, but Rollins refuses. A week later, Cena challenges him again, but the authority instead forces him to defend the U.S. title against Rollins. Cena beats Rollins, but suffers a broken nose for real during the match. And on the August 3rd Raw, Rollins would defeat Cena to a winner-takes-all match at SummerSlam, both for the WWE title and the U.S. title. On the August 11th Tough Enough, Cena would accept Rollins' challenge, and here we are, title versus title. Before we talk about the match, I do want to bring up Seth Rollins because it was around this time where he had a handful of matches where guys were getting hurt, whether it was Finn Balor with the power bomb into the barricade, John Cena's nose here and Bret Hart made a pretty adamant statement that Seth Rollins was unsafe. And a lot of guys came to his defense and we know that eventually Seth is going to wrestle sting and do a buckle bomb. And that's going to be it for sting. He can't finish the match and sting's not going to wrestle again. Sting feel as sting has come out and said that Seth felt horrible about that. And even acknowledged as they're pushing him into the ambulance that Seth yelled something like, I was you for Halloween. I mean, he was one of his favorites, so he would never intentionally hurt a guy. Do you think this is an unfair thing for for fans or Bret Hart to say that, that Seth is dangerous? Is it just accidents happen? Or when you start to see a string of injuries like this as a professional wrestler yourself, do you start to think, oh shit, maybe there's smoke to that fire. Gosh, never being in the ring. The only way to really tell if a guy is is unsafe or if he's a victim of circumstances or if it's just, God, it's just, you know, we've been snake bit, is to be in the ring with him. It's the only way I could actually say to you, unless it's something obvious where you're German suplexing a guy and you're dropping him right on his head. You know, it's pretty obvious that's the wrong thing to be doing. But... Unless you've been in a ring with him, which I haven't, you can't say, okay, the guy's dangerous or reckless because that's that's a tag you don't want to pin on a guy. Was he a victim of circumstances and some things just occurred and they all occurred in a short amount of time? Seems more probable. Um I know the jumping knee came right up the middle, and it was one of those things that that is, you know, I don't know if he said watch the knee or if he didn't. You know, I don't know. I was, you know, I had that match, and it was like he splattered his nose pretty good. And all credit to John being a tough bastard to just go ahead and finish the match. Um, I don't think if I was a betting man that Seth, because he's just – He's too good and he's too professional. I don't think he's reckless. I think it might have been just just bad luck. Yeah, I tend to agree. You know, I I don't I don't know why Seth got that rap so quickly. I mean, it does feel like if you're gonna work a hard hitting physical style uh, and you're gonna do a bunch of matches occasionally, things are gonna happen. But the idea that he was reckless, I never really I didn't get that vibe at all. And, and I don't think enough wrestlers came out and said anything to support that besides Bret Hart. And, and to your point, he was never in the ring with him either. So they steal the show here, really. I mean, Seth Rollins and John Cena, title for title, good 19 minutes and 24 seconds. The fans are going to boo Cena more than anyone on the show. Um, Meltzer says, so to this audience, Cena coming back from a broken nose and his 500th wish granted which was played up earlier with a big video, wasn't going to stop them from booing him. The crowd was super hot, cheering and chanting for Rollins. This is a remarkable match. They pull out all the big stops. I have a feeling you didn't absolutely love it because there are so many finishing maneuvers in it. But then John Stewart comes in with a chair, pauses for a while, and then hits Cena in the gut, then puts the chair on the ground, and Rollins gives, Rollins gives Cena a pedigree on the chair for the pin. And Rollins, uh, Meltzer would say, Rollins comes across here like he's the best wrestler in the world with his performance here. 
Fans were chanting, thank you, Stuart, for causing Cena to lose four and a half stars. I love the match. I hated the John Stewart thing. And the explanation we would get later was he didn't want Cena breaking Ric Flair's record of world title reigns. What'd you think of the match? What'd you think of the finish? Uh, yeah, I don't. John Stewart being involved in the finish after those guys have went out and performed at the level that they had and worked as hard as they had worked to me seems mighty anticlimactic. Um, I don't know why you couldn't have after a match like that and the story that you have, why you couldn't have had just Seth go over. Right. Who do you hurt when I, when you've got performers like that and they're two top guys and certainly as, as hard as John has been pushed over the years and yep, the, the big wins that he's had, all that investment in John, it's not going to kill John Cena off to get beat by Seth Rollins. I'm sorry. It's just not. And if it did kill him off, it would have meant that he wasn't over anyway. One victory, if it kills you off, you you were just being propped up. Anyway, you weren't really over. So I think after all that, you could have had Seth go over uh, and no one would have been damaged. Let me ask, do you think that creative feels the need to involve Jon Stewart because they do have a big celebrity like this? Do you think maybe Stewart says, hey, I want to do something, and they felt pressure to involve him somehow or is this just a scapegoat to uh we're gonna have seen a lose but wink wink not really uh i don't know kind of rad, to be honest with you it's when they have those discussions i don't know if they just admit we want to get the star power out there to add to the match um you know, I don't know if, if that comes into the conversation or if somebody, if Cena needs an out or, or, but if they're clearly cheering Seth anyway and Boo and John anyway, I'm back to that reaction. You know, I don't care if they're screaming pro or con. If everybody is invested in that match and in the finish, at the end, you did the right thing. If people don't react, then there's a there's a reason, and there's probably a couple of reasons, and they're all bad. So I think you, you're looking at, do you walk away? In every single match that you have, somebody has to get over. That's the oldest rule of thumb. Somebody got to get over in that match. So you got to ask who actually got over. Was it Seth? Was it? You know, the star that you have coming down on the end, was it a combination of two? I mean, who actually really got over during the deal? And if somebody got over, then it worked. I also want to ask, you know, this is title versus title. You know, you go back to WrestleMania six when the Intercontinental Champion took on the world champion. Granted, that was Hulk Hogan. That's the main event. It goes on last. Here we've got the title being defended sort of in the middle of the show to make room for Brock Lesnar and Undertaker. How do you feel about that? Sometimes a given match. The old school me would say the world champion goes out at the end of the night every night, period. Right. Through seeing the evolution of the business and things get switched around and and having so many matches on a card and all these different variables that are out there, sometimes a match is bigger than the world title. If it's a personal angle, I would have said when the streak was going, the Undertaker streak, it was thought of as the main event more than whoever was in the world title match. I think the streak was more important than that. Just myself. Right. I thought, I thought that's how strong the streak was. Uh, after he lost it, 
they lost some of the luster. But I think you got to look at who had the most heat, you know, who was selling tickets, who was driving, you know, who was going to drive that pay-per-view, what would get the most out of the promotion, what is the feature thing that you're going to say as our main event. Because on any given night, as loaded with talent as they were and they are, you could have any any of three or four matches which were qualified for the main event. Just depends. So I, I don't agree that this match went on too early. This is also for the first time uh, we see the ESPN WWE relationship. Uh, SummerSlam gets a ton of coverage on ESPN. Were you surprised to see that? I mean, you've been a sports fan your whole life. The idea that WWE is covered on ESPN had to be pretty cool for a sports guy like me and you, right? I was thrilled. We were finally being accepted as legitimate athletes, you know, and forget about, you know, the uh, predetermined match results and all that. It told me that ESPN looked at us as being world-class athletes and it was nice to be recognized that way and to be respected. And I'm sure it made a huge difference in the butts in the seats for those three days. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.